Welcome back, everyone. Um, hopefully you guys have noticed that I have a new camera, or not a new camera, but I've kind of changed up the camera a little bit. So now I have like a little green screen. It's not very good, but it works. Um, so the first thing we're going to get into uh, is state machines. So how do state machines actually work? Um, what are state machines or finite state machines? So um, let's break it down. So finite is the opposite of infinite. Infinite is forever like moving or not moving, but something that lasts forever, right? Finite is something that's, let's say like five. It, it's, it's countable almost, right? So there's an end to it. So finite state machine, meaning we're gonna have a bunch of states and in, our, in the context of a game, generally speaking, what a state machine allows us to do is go between different states to control something, right? So let's kind of visualize this out a little bit. Let's draw out three different states. So we're gonna have this guy, let's copy that. Let's just copy this. And then we're gonna have one more, whoop. And then we have a third one right here. So we're gonna have three different states um, for the sake of simplicity, but also the sake of what we're doing, we're gonna have um, an idle state, for example. So in this idle state, this is where our golem or boss is going to be idle. So let's move this down a little bit. Or actually, let's leave it there. And then in here, we'll say chase. So this is where the uh, gob blah, golem will chase the um, player, right? And then this one, I don't know, let's say attack, right? And essentially what we want to do is we want to go from idle. It depends on what you want to do. But generally speaking, it uh, this is how it works. You want to go from idle to chase or from chase back to idle. Um, if we're going to go from chase to attack, we can go from chase to attack, right? Depending on the conditions. So let's say the, the player is going to be 100 pixels away. We don't want the, we want the golem to now be idle but if it's 50 pixels away then we're going to chase once it's like 10 pixels away then we're going to attack but let's say the player goes into that 50 range then we're going to go back to chase and then it run the player runs away even more to 100 pixels then it's going to go back to idle now if you want a way to go from attack to idle that's also okay but in the in this case this is how our diagram will essentially look so we now have three different states state machines essentially that are going to allow us to do these things right so we're gonna code this out in a second, but that's the general idea of a state machine. So we're gonna have different things or conditions that allow us to go from idle to chase, or chase to attack. And under attack, we can have other states, right? We can have um, shoot, we can have laser, uh, as you can, well, I'll actually show you right now. In our um, pack here, we have a bunch of different things. We have a laser, we have a projectile. Um, in our character, in our zombie, or not zombie, golem, um, there's a few different like attacks. There's a shoot projectile thing. I guess a laser thing. There's also like a melee attack um, There's also a defense one. Where is it? Um, where he kind of curls into a ball at this one this line right here So maybe there's like a defense mechanism you want to add into your boss system, right? So let's delete this for now and let me just kind of run through what I have so far so all I've done is I've just created a simple uh, platformer uh, the player is just a simple player with the default uh, script so if I if I remove this actually and I built it in it's just the template right here so I can create and it's the exact same so save that again in the main um, I have nothing else I have just have a static body that's gonna act as the floor and I have a bunch of collision shapes to map out our area and a panel for the floor so the panel is going to be uh, the ground that we see so it just so kind of looks nice all right, and then last thing, we have a golem, and this golem has nothing in the script yet. We're going to add some things together. Um, and last thing I'm going to show you guys that I've added in the left that you should be able to see now, past my face. I can kind of cover it, but not really, um, is the state. So we have idle state, shoot state, state, and state factory. And then we also have golem.gd. So we have all these open, and I'm going to kind of run through it all together. Um, just close this okay the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add gravity to our golem um, let's do that but we also want to extend uh, body character character body 2d you should get that by default but I deleted everything um, and we're also going to have to add in this the speed jump velocity and gravity and so now our golem will be able to go down to the ground boom there we go 
Awesome. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add um, a state factory. In our state factory, I'm just going to copy all this and we'll go through it one by one. So we're going to have a state factory that essentially holds all the states we have. And it's going to hold the idle states. This is the class itself, which we'll do in a minute. But then this is also the name that it holds. It's a string, right? So if we want to like call that st class, we, we get it by calling that string, right? So idle is like IDL. E uh, with an undercase I, etc. Right, so whatever you want, and you'll see how this works in a second. Obviously, it's going to give us an error because we haven't set any of the classes yet. But yeah, that's how we do it. So now, in this one, by the way, is a class. So this is a class state factory, um, and we're just going to print no state, whatever. If this, uh, if there is no state, just so we don't get errors. Okay, next thing we're going to do is let's go to our shoot state. This one's going to be pretty simple. We're just going to have state we're going to extend state and have shoot state as a class name so extend state is uh, extending off of another class which we're going to do in a second as well um, we're just ready pass we're not going to add anything yet um, but this class name is shoot state right so in our class factory we have shoot state so let's go to state now and add some stuff in there so to make this a class name as you might know is we're going to extend no t and then we're also going to name this uh, class name state and then in here, I'm just going to add a few things, a few variables. So we're going to have change state, animation, persistent state, and velocity. Actually, I don't think we need velocity. Yeah, we don't need velocity anymore. We used to in Godot 3, but not in Godot 4. Uh, and then this is our setup. So the setup is going to allow us to set up the animation. It's going to allow us to change the state, and it's going to have us persist the state. OK, and now in idle, we're going to do the same thing as shoot state. So I'm going to just copy this over. We're going to extend state, and we're going to have the class name be idle state. So now in our idle factory, um, this should, uh, yeah, on error. There we go. Or state factory, sorry. It'll on error because we now have those class names. All right, so now in our golem, let's actually take that out. I don't know why I have that. Um, let's do a few things. OK, the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to have to add a function that allows us to change the state. Uh, for this change state, let me add some variables that we need. We need state and state factory. There we go. And yeah, there we go. So we're going to basically call it's going to it's just a function that calls in a new state name. Um, we're going to check the current state, um, which currently is nothing, right? Uh, if it is or if it's not nothing or if it's not null, then we'll queue free. And this essentially allows us to switch into the new state. So it's going to take our current state, delete it and make a new one, as long as that current state isn't the same state, right? Um, next up, let's add our ready function. In this ready function, we're just going to create the state factory. Um, so we're going to call state factory dot new um, as because it's a class and we can do that. And and yeah, that's it. And then we're just going to change state to idle. Um, and I think this should work. Um, just keep in mind here in the setup, because this setup is calling the state right so we're setting up um, our state every time and the animation is is the animation that's being stored inside that state and in that animation where i'm setting the animation as the animation player so you can set actually animation uh something else what is it the uh, sprite but i'm going to do this um, i currently only have two animations of idle and shoot and the shoot is just an animation of, sh of him shooting and the idle is just uh, him idle okay uh let's Put the on loop. Let's go back here. And I think this should work. So now if I go in here, ooh, it's not going to play idle. Um, I think I know why. Do, do, do. OK, yeah. So we're in the idle state, but we haven't done anything. Sorry. So let's actually go to our idle state. And we're going to create some functions in here. So this goes back to our plate or our uh, little paint here. If we're in the idle state, what do we want to do? There's a bunch of things we can add into the state that allows us to do things. So in the next video, we'll add, we'll actually add in the boss system. But in this video, we're just going to have some simple things. So we're just going to have a function called idle. And it's just going to play the idle state, uh, idle animation. And that's it. So now I think it should work, hopefully. No, it's not going to work still. Um, because we have to actually call it. So we have to say, um, we're going to say idle. And 
we're going to need a function called idle. But I'm going to copy these two functions I have. So I have shoot and idle. So if I call idle, it's going to change the state to idle, which technically I guess it already does here. In fact, I'll, I'll actually just delete that. And then it's going to call idle. It's going to change the state to idle. And then we're going to go into that state and play the idle uh, function, right? Because we have idle right here. Um, we're going to do the same thing for shoot, actually. So let's go into shoot. Do uh, shoot. So we have we now have a shoot function, and now in our golem, we now need some sort of condition in order to move into the shoot state or the idle state. Because um, by automatic, on the ready, it should now play idle. But uh, when I go to the uh, golem, nothing happens. I can go into him, but that that's it. So I want some sort of condition to actually activate that, right? I'm going to do something very simple. It's not actually good. In fact, we're not going to actually use this um, in the next video, but that's okay. It's just for it to work. Um, we're basically just checking if the player is close or not by 100 pixels. So now we can see the state is being printed idle, but once I go close enough onto the right, it's going to start playing shoot, right? But then once I leave again, far on the left, it's going to play idle. If I go close enough, it'll play shoot. Go far enough, it'll play idle. So that's how we go between different states. Um, the condition is this. This is the condition. It's not a very good condition. Um, what we'll do in the next video is add a bunch of area 2Ds and a bunch of stuff like that to actually add proper conditions. But hopefully you guys understand the concept behind state machines and how it works. Um, I will probably link this project in the, uh, in the GitHub below uh, once the project is finished. Um, I'm going to do one more part where we actually do the animations, all the animations of the Golem, and we'll do that one together. Um, but hopefully you guys understand the concept of state machines. I think state machines are really important to games. Um, they're a pretty simple concept, but they're kind of hard to understand at first. Um, coding it can be a bit complicated. You have to understand classes, and well, you don't necessarily have to. I think you could probably do states without classes, but it's a bit weird to do that. Um, this way, it kind of allows us to go into different scripts as a state. So now we can do anything inside of this um, script, right? So we can call a bunch of things that we want it to do in the idle state or call a bunch of things in the shoot state. In fact, let's say um, let's say we're in the idle state. I can start printing idle instead of going in here and doing that. So in instead, now it'll print idle inside, right? because we are now in that idle state, right? So we can do anything in, in this state and add a bunch of different conditions, right? So now I can add different conditions to go from idle into the chase outside of the golem.gd. So once I've gone into like the chase state or whatever, now I can add my own conditions to go into that other state. And it's very flexible because I can always come back to it and change it relatively easily. Whereas if you just have everything in one, script it becomes very complicated and and the script becomes very long right but this is like 50 lines and we have a bunch of different lines here um so yeah hopefully that makes sense um join my discord if you have any questions it's in the link below uh, i updated most of my videos actually recently to the new discord link um i hope you guys like my new channel icon i just changed it yesterday um I, my discord also i changed it which is pretty cool um i'm trying to I'm doing my best to help anyone who needs help in my Discord and, you know, try to grow a community with you guys. I would love if you guys joined. Um, it'd be a lot, it'd be really awesome if you guys joined because we can grow a community together and maybe you can come watch me stream sometimes. Um, but yeah, uh, other than that, I have Patreon down below. Um, you can maybe go pledge to that if you like. Um, but that's it. And I will see you guys next time. Bye bye.